Whether it's bad planning, bad luck, bad timing, or bad inventions, well-intentioned bad decisions have plagued history for thousands of years. Welcome to Historic Hindsight. Hello and welcome to another episode of Historic Hindsight. I'm John, that's Tom, and today we're going to talk to you about the Aleutian Island Campaign. That's right, Johnny, the Aleutian Island Campaign, a campaign I guarantee you've never heard about. It is a World no. War II campaign. Uh, for the American forces against the Japanese. I am wearing my, uh, well, sort of appropriate airborne gear with my, you know, my 1911 and my M1 above me with my canteen mug full of, uh, full of beer. Yeah, I got a can. So, you know, period incorrect as per usual. And, and that is mostly foam. <laughs> so... <laughs> it looked like it. You got a nice foam mustache from it. Delicious. All so, right. Uh, the Aleutian Islands, the only, the only thing I've ever heard them from is because when we were learning like uh geography and they were teaching the uh, what the ar archipelagos or whatever the heck the, all the, the whatever the Aleutian islands are uh that's the only yep. way only thing i've ever heard about them I don't well know anything so else. so remember that time in history class johnny in high school where you learned about how the united states was invaded during world war ii no we, yeah no, I, no the united I. states was never invaded like as far as like we've not well, fought a land I didn't think we had fought. I didn't think we had fought a land battle or land war, other than the Civil War and yeah, some well, of yeah, the American yeah. Revolution. Yeah, but since yep, then, yep. by a foreign power actually in invading yeah. foreign troops on on U.S. soil. Yeah, well, it happened in World War II during the Aleutian Island campaign. <laughs> okay, so uh, so you've already kind of sort of explained what the Aleutian Islands are, but. They are a series of islands off the coast of Alaska that are like a volcanic series of islands. We own like 99% of them. I think Russia still owns one or two. Oh, you know, really? back I didn't when. know that. Yeah, they kept a couple from when they sold us Alaska literally for two cents an acre. So, I mean, I guess that's, that's probably kept still pretty expensive. Alaska. <laughs> it big. was a couple million. Yeah, it was a couple <laughs> million dollars. But it's not like, you know, for cheapest land you're ever going to buy oh, two yeah, cents an I acre. Mean, yeah, you you find the loans and make that happen if you if you have that opportunity. I think I think the Russians got a little bit uh, peeved when they found out that Alaska's full of glorious glorious oil. Oh, but yeah, you that know. oil man. Oh well. So before Japan even uh, bombed Pearl Harbor, they were actually looking at the islands as a strategic invasion point for North America. So if they were going to get into the <laughs> continental North America, like that would be the most logical <laughs> route to at least have a series of islands to set up a base of operations. Yeah. So then the, then the, did they then look at a map of the United States and see how fucking far they were from the rest of it? Well, uh, they were at war with Canada, too, Johnny. So, I mean, it's, you know. I mean, Canada's far, too. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, so, and in, in the, in the thing about the Aleutian Islands is it's always foggy. So getting any, like, good intel of the area is, is ne next to nil. Yeah, and, and that'll come back to bite them in the, bat, the butt. But after bombing Pearl Harbor, Admiral Yamamoto, uh, who commanded the Northern Fleet under Vice Admiral uh, Hasagaya, he commanded Hasagaya to take two non-fleet aircraft carriers, or two aircraft carriers that weren't a part of the other, you know, larger fleet. Sure. Uh, along with five cruisers, 12 destroyers, six submarines, four troop transports with 8,500 troops, and various accompanying ships to go and take over the Aleutian Islands. Their plan was to first attack the Dutch harbor and then move to Kiska and then the island of Atu. I mean, maybe this is just me being ignorant, but that's, I mean, it seems like they went well equipped. Uh, it's pretty decent equipped for what was like more of an ex, you know, exploratory kind of thing to right, see where yeah. we could go. This wasn't a full on invasion. This was like, what can we get away with? Sure. Okay. So the Battle of Dutch Harbor, it would uh, kick off on the 2nd of June, 1942, at the city of Unalaska, Alaska. I can't what? make that shit up. The city's name is Unalaska, Alaska. Ha who named that? <laughs> who's, the, who's the idiot that's like, what are we going to name this town? Ah, we're going to be as Unalaska as possible. So we'll just name so, ourselves Unalaska. We're Unalaska. We're, we're not like the rest of Alaska. We're Unalaska. Like, it's not, e it's not even a name that is like, good and makes sense at all no it's stupid like it's a bad uh, word also like just it was good. a it was a two-day bombing stretch of the dutch harbor and it, that's another name that the island is named dutch harbor which is stupid in and of itself no it's they, not they're not bombing a harbor no they're the, the, the whole, island the is whole dutch island. harbor 
for some reason. All right. I don't know. I, didn't, I, I don't know. Um, the attack started well for the Japanese, and by well, I mean due to fog, literally half of their, their planes did not make it to their target. <laughs> and of those half the planes, they either, one of two things happened. They either got lost and went, screw it, and flew back to the aircraft well, right, area, yeah. fine. Can't or they literally ran out of fuel and dished it in the ocean. So, so uh, Did they eject? Or, like, what do you mean, he ditched it in the ocean? Like, they crashed landed Like, they're in the just ocean. dead in the ocean now? Well, um, you, you know, hopefully, maybe the cruisers found them at some yeah, point. Maybe. But, I mean, yeah, before one of the whale, sharks, octopus, whatever the heck is in the ocean that's terrifying and wants to kill you found them? Not likely. Yeah. Probably not, no. And of, of these planes, one of them that would actually crash on the island would get put back together and would be, like, one of our major, like, it was a zero, and it was, like, the first zero that we captured, so it was, okay. like, our first look at the Japanese aircrafts and so what their you know, strengths and weaknesses yeah, were. Um, in the end, only 17 aircraft actually found their target in the first two days. Holy cow. Uh, and the Americans would find the aircraft carriers themselves, like, they would send their own planes out, would find the aircraft carriers, but, again, due to the fog, was unable to really do any damage to the Japanese fleet. And of those 17 planes, they were able to bomb the oil fields in, on Alaska and damage them and set them ablaze, but, like, that was kind of where it was. Yeah. Um, now, you might not know this. So the, you said the Aleutian Islands are always foggy. Is it, is, is it a seasonal thing like San Francisco, or is it just – it's just, like, with where they are? I'm, I'm guessing, they, you know, they don't yeah. have the seasons like California does. From what I, from what, what I read and in, 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 in the time frame of this campaign – I think it's kind of a regular thing that they're just, always just kind of yeah. foggy. Yeah, I mean, I mean it's cold. You know, they're not going to get they're not going to get the seasonal changes like we do or anything. So even, no, even it's if just it is pretty like much a, always a cold. season, yeah, a season's like six months. Anyway, yeah. in Alaska, like they have two seasons <laughs> yeah. and they're both six months long, or one's nine and three, whatever. But yeah, so you're gonna have fog most of the time, even if it is seasonal, I suppose. Yeah, yeah, it was it was pretty much just foggy. Um, their, their next battle plan was the invasion of Kiska, which would go a lot better for them. Uh, it would start on June 6th, 1942, and by better, I mean it was undefended, so... So they, they just... They we just got went, it! They just showed up. They just went and found an island, and they're like, hey guys, uh, we're here now. Was there anybody in it? On the island? Uh, there was, there, there were... Okay, it was so, occupied. <laughs> I'm, I'm glad that you asked that, Johnny. So, um... Well, there was a set of, of, of Native Americans that, that occupied most of the Aleutian Islands. Uh-huh. And, and they were there, and they were the only ones that really defended. They were the Atuan Unagaks, Unagaks, whatever. Atuan. I'm just going to call them the Atunans because, like, you know, I got you, that, that part probably you're, okay. You're at least closer on that part <laughs> anyway. Yeah, the, the Unagaks, I, I don't know. It's U-N-A-G-A-X, so. Yeah, that sounds right to me. Sure. I'll give it to you. Um. So they're there, and they're defending. Uh, the Americans, in, a, in an odd course, we broke the Japanese code early. So even before the bombing of Pearl Harbor, we, we knew their code. Uh, so we oh, actually they're, knew, they're, 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 yeah, their they're, they're secret code for all communication. Yeah, their transmission code. So we knew how many troops were there. We knew how many were coming, what, what boats were coming. We knew everything. We knew when the evasion was going to kind of take off. So the Americans, before this invasion even happened, offered the natives, like, hey, look, we'll evacuate you. And the natives are, nah, this is our, you know, we're good. They can't treat us any worse than you treat us. <laughs> right, yeah, like, what, what are they going to do that you haven't? <laughs> this, uh, this invasion actually would mark the first time that the continental United States was invaded by a foreign power since the War of 1812, you know, that war where Canada came down and burned our <laughs> capital to the ground. That's right. That we also just we just don't talk about these, which we don't talk about. No, like we like just we nah, we're not gonna mention that. We don't we don't like to mention the times that we lose, John. No, come on, no, Canada's the are Americans nice. never lose. Yeah, Canada's our nice, passive aggressive, friendly neighbor. That if you know if we did get into a battle, we would definitely just smoke them, right? Like no problem. That no problem. So after taking uh, after taking Kiska, they moved on to the uh, the invasion of Atu, uh, which started on the seventh of June, and the Japanese face. Uh, little resistance here, and most of it, like I said, was the Native American troops. There were still a few American troops, but most of them were withdrawn by May of 1942. So about a month before this invasion even happened, they got pulled out of there. Um, after Japan invaded, they would uh, they would move to uh, to pull a very American move here, and by that I mean they didn't like the natives either. So they moved them all to concentration camps. <sighs> In Hokkaido, Japan. In uh, Japan? But not, 
yeah, in Japan. They moved, they, they shipped them all out to Hokkaido, Japan. Uh, and not to be outdone, Johnny, the Americans decided to take this as an excuse to protect the remaining Atuans uh, mm -hmm. by forcefully evacuating them to continental Alaska where they were put in internment camps. Internment so... camps, which is much, it's like, it's much, it's like, uh, much nicer than concentration camps, right? Yeah, sure. It, 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 it's <laughs> like, it's like a La Quinta Inn is a concentration camp, and then the Four Seasons is a internment camp. Which, which Four Seasons, Johnny? Uh, the, the, the one in between the porn shop and the cop and the jail and the <laughs> whatever else it was. Yeah. <laughs> so, in any case, we're now at the at the point where the Japanese have invaded. They've got part of the Aleutian Islands, and so and so from right now, the American response, obviously from the population, uh, was fear that that the, the Japanese were going to now invade. But it must not have actually been that big of a fear because, again, I never heard any of this growing up in school. I I never right. heard about an invasion. And again, I go although I guess that technical like invasion of continental united states i mean does it really count it was a series of islands off the coast of alaska which is alaska really continental right. united states I yeah mean, well and, and technically it is but it really is yeah an invasion of the united states would be like the clickbait headline that would get you to read the article about what actually happened uh during all this by august 1942 the u.s aaf and i have to you know clarify this for home yeah, we didn't have an Air Force yet. We had the United oh. States Army Air Force or the United States Navy Air Force. So uh, there wasn't, it was, you know, not did, its own independent force. Did we develop the Air Force during World War II or after World War II? Uh, at, it, the, the United States Air Force as a, its own independent entity yeah. comes, comes out of World War II, but after World War II. Okay, so they decided after World War II we need like, a, we need an air force like like we'll make it its own thing and it won't be a part yeah. of the army and it won't be a part of the navy it'll be its own thing yep yep they do that after the war okay uh, they established an air base on Attic Island and begin bombing the Japanese position on Kiska so pretty much right off the bat and by right off the bat I mean you know several months later we finally get around to building an an air base so that we can actually attack the Japanese. Well, yeah, but have you seen how far away Alaska is? I mean, it took them a while to get there. And and at the start of this campaign, the entire, like, Alaskan force uh, was around 45,000 troops at the start. So it's not like the, the state was really defended by all that much. Right. But, I mean, the Japanese sent 8,500 troops, right? Yeah, 8,500. So, you know, they, they have the numbers. They just uh, have to get all of them to that one spot. <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, additionally, the U.S. would send submarines and surface ships to begin patrolling the area and harassing the Japanese fleet. One of these attacks would occur on July 5th when a U.S. submarine sunk one destroyer and injured two more Japanese destroyers. So sunk we're starting destroyer. to harass. We're like, you know, like, hey, you took our land, but we're not going to let you just keep it. <laughs> it's like, yeah. Really. And Johnny, this is our response for the rest of the year until March of 1943. So we don't really do anything else. For like, it just we just we we bomb them occasionally, and we we send some boats to patrol to make sure they like you know they don't leave those islands. So th I mean, this seems like a really really like everybody involved knew how small a part of the overall war that was going on was. <laughs> yeah, so and, like, and a lot of them, it. a lot of them were like, hey, you know what? This is this is a whole lot better than being you know in Europe right now. <laughs> <laughs> or Let's if you're if you're the Japanese forces in like Bataan or something yeah. along those lines, yeah, like that, yeah, I'm <laughs> yeah Iwo Jima, I'm, I'm okay. yeah, like, wait, Iwo Jima. Let's yeah. take the Aleutian uh, Islands and just well, whatever. It's we'll fun. just hang out for a little bit. Uh, the next major aspect that the Americans do is the Battle of Komodorsky Islands, uh, where Rear Admiral Charles McMorris uh, was set to eliminate the Japanese supply convoys. So in March of 1943, his fleet was sent to destroy the Japanese convoy fleets that were resupplying the island. Okay. He would wind up uh, engaging their fleets, uh, destroying or damaging, sorry, two Japanese cruisers. And after damaging two Japanese cruisers, the Japanese were like, yeah, we're just not going to bother resupplying our troops. <laughs> just that ah, that's good enough they'll but, be fine like, like it's okay they will they will periodically send submarines to to attempt to resupply but there's not exactly like a lot of stuff that you can yeah. fit onto so, a submarine so 
Okay, so difference between and I know it's uh, you know I kind I know the difference, but the difference between destroyed and uh, damaged. When they damage one of these ships, that basically takes it out of commission. Yes, like they send it like back the, the for ship. Repairs, yeah, the ship has or, to go back for repairs. When so, it's damaged, yeah, so that, it's that, like yeah, it's as yeah. good as for the short term. For the short destroyed. term, yes. Yeah, yeah. Because when it's damaged, when it's classified as damaged, it 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 really can't operate in its in its field of operation. Right, and it so has, they have to go back for it. repairs. Okay. Yeah, it hasn't okay. sunk just yet, but like a, a good example of a damaged ship would be like the rudders out. So you can't yeah. really maneuver do a whole lot yeah. when the rudders out. Uh, the next major uh, operation that they would do would would be to actually let's, it's Operation Land Grab, Johnny. It's time to take our land. Back from the Japanese. Okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, they took over some islands, right? How many do they yeah, have at we this gotta, point? We got we to we gotta get them back, right? Uh, on May 11th, 1943, the American forces would attempt to recapture our two islands, which is almost a year after it was captured, so we really... This was priority number one for us. Hey, I mean, listen, there's a lot going on. <laughs> there's a little bit of a war... And then the rest of the world going on. Yeah, there's more important things than Alaskan Ush- Aleutian Islands right now. <laughs> right? Like, but in American fashion, and, and to tell how small of a scale this was, we didn't really give our troops anything that they needed. Although it is May, it's also May in Alaska. So, right, which is not May. It's which still is not winter. May. It's still really cold. And we didn't give them any winter equipment. Like winter coats, winter gloves. Boots. All the people down in the continental United States are like, hey, it's getting warm. You know, we got the flowers coming up. Like, what do you need all any of that for? Yeah, what do you need What do you need winter campaign coats for? Yeah. Here's some <laughs> shorts for your uniform. Wear those. Like the British uh, the British troops desert shorts. Like, <laughs> here, you, you guys can have some of those. You'll be fine. Well, that's going to come and bite them in the ass in a little bit. And by bite them in the ass, I mean literally people were freezing to death and getting frostbite and having to be sent off the front line because, well. It's going to frostbite him in the ass, is what you're saying. <laughs> it's frostbite him in the ass, yeah. Uh, they also didn't have enough landing craft. Poor weather conditions made the invasion slow, but they, <laughs> they would recruit, Johnny, some of, those, uh, some of those natives to help scout their, their local, you know, the local territory. They nicknamed sure. this native group of, of soldiers the Kastner's Cutthroats. So, you know, like, not a bad nickname. May I ask why they were called the Cutthroats? Uh, I I didn't look into that so much. I'm gonna I'm gonna make the assumption that a throat or two might have been cut. That they they earned that nickname. They might have in earned some that form or fashion. Uh, the American vehicles also struggled in the frozen tundra, and um, you know, imagine like going out and trying to start a diesel truck when it's you know like below yeah. freezing, and then imagine to do that in the frozen tundra. Yeah, Good like to- Top Gear did a thing where they like drove a like a Toyota to Tundra or something, Toyota something or another in like up to the North pole and modern cars and vehicles have a hard time starting and operating in cold conditions. When I go out in the winter in Indiana, sometimes I push the button cause it's a push button and it's, it chokes for a while. So yeah, I can only imagine that 1941 uh, vehicles aren't going to do well. Diesel trucks are doing good. <laughs> yeah, well, they weren't. They weren't doing so damn good. Uh, the Japanese defensive strategy was actually to allow the Americans to land, so give them that false sense of confidence, and they they uh, dug in on the high grounds and engaged the Americans as they came up to try to take their positions. Uh, and it was super successful and led I to mean, high casualties. And by high casualties, I mean of the 11,000 that landed on Atu Island, 549 were killed, 1,148 were wounded. 1,200 suffered cold weather injuries. So, oh, God. so I have to say, right off the bat, you lost as many to cold weather issues as you did to being wounded. So yeah. good job, guys. And 614 would also die of miscellaneous issues, uh, such as disease, booby traps, um, friendly fire. Booby traps? Yeah. The Japanese were, were really prone with uh, setting booby traps. Uh, it's that ninja heritage they have. Is there no something? Doubt. I don't know. Yeah. On, on, on May 29th, 1943, the Japanese were surrounded and knew they had no chance to withdraw or be resupplied, so they did the most reasonable thing that could be done, and they conducted one of the largest bonsai attacks in recorded war. Bon- bonsai? Yeah, that's where, they, that's where they know they're going to die. That's kamikaze. And, 
and they and they just charge the enemy. Banzai! And they run oh. at you with the bayonet. No. Oh, so this is okay. This is They're this is separate from Kamikaze. Banzai yeah, this is, separate, is yeah. Kamikaze is okay. when they take their plane, That's the plane and they yeah. crash it into. No, no, no. Banzai is when the infantry just... fixes bayonets and just bum rushes your position. <laughs> okay, and just per just okay. Now, expecting why are that they? Why Banzai? Uh, bon- like bonsai yeah. trees are like these peaceful little things that they like manipulate. And, like, I don't know. Well, Johnny, you're the one who's more familiar with Asian culture than I am. I figured you would have known uh, why they call the bonsai. I'm familiar with their language. I liked well, swords when I was like 15. Like, <laughs> <laughs> this charge was led by Colonel Yamasaki, uh, who uh, who actually wound up penetrating very deep into the American lines and actually made his way into the rear echelon of the American troops. And the All combat right. was very brutal, fierce to fierce, hand to hand, and nearly pushed the American forces off the island. But the end result is that the bonsai attack did fail or succeeded, I guess, depending on what your position with that is. And only 28 of the entire Japanese force on the island was taken prisoner, with none of them being officers. So every single officer fought oh. to their death, and only 28 soldiers were taken prisoner. And most of them were like, it's not like they had a choice. They were severely wounded. and it's Right. Like, they were dragged into prisoner ship <laughs> and then yeah. bandaged their wounds like, we need to capture somebody. Uh, the Americans counted 2,351 Japanese that they buried after this invasion uh and they figured that there were actually several hundred more that were buried due to the bombardments from the from the you know constant aerial bombardments that right were going yeah on just the last year. just buried in dirt snow whatever rocks whatever else that came up from that and in in that destruction holy cow so we successfully retaken back a2 but it i would came say so at a cost of what a, <laughs> of, of like <laughs> 3,000 casualties, Johnny. It wasn't exactly an easy, an easy victory here. Uh, you know, war, war is ugly, but at least they got that Aleutian Island back. So they, they planned for Kiska. We've got to get these Japanese off Kiska Island now. We've got to get them out of Alaska, out of continental United States. We are, we are taking our territory back, Johnny. Wait, wait, why do we have to get them out of continental United States? Can't we just send them down, like, with their families down in the Japanese internment camps in California? <laughs> Well, yeah, yeah. <laughs> there. I mean, Johnny, what are you talking about? We've never. <laughs> oh, that's right. No, yeah, that's right. Yeah. Anybody that yeah. will be an episode on a future date. Yeah. A younger me once argued in high school uh, for Japanese internment in a paper that I had to write in English class. Oh, in a paper. Yeah, in a paper. Not just and as I an idiot it. having a conversation. No, like it was in a paper. <laughs> well, the thing to be fair, look, we were told that we had to write a paper on either the atomic bombs or the Japanese internment camps, and we had to take a position one way or the other. And, of course, everybody <laughs> in the class was taking, like, positions on how we shouldn't have nuked the Japanese or how we shouldn't have interned the Japanese. And I'm like, well, I'm going to be that guy oh my that God. takes the other side. Hey, okay, well, I, got okay, Tom, I got an A on the paper. Tom, I got take, an A on the paper. Take the other side by saying nuking the Japanese was the right decision. That's a, a much easier position to take. Oh, yeah, that, that was we dropped We dropped pamphlets. Uh, and it prevented countless additional deaths by doing. Yeah, that. I was I was, was the only one in the war. I was like, the only one in the class that that argued for Japanese internment. Yeah, don't um, say. <laughs> <laughs> Which to for everybody at home, I don't actually believe that. Has your position changed? Occasionally, <laughs> occasionally I no, say that's... things or argue things that I don't actually believe just to see what happens. No, and that's fine, but also, even if you did believe that, it's an important thing to note that opinions can change. You can grow with it, and you yes, can, yes, you you can, can. evolve the more information you learn and, and as, as you grow. So I think even if you did believe that, it's fine, because now you, I assume, think I've that... Grow, yeah. Um, no, yeah, that throwing, was not... Throwing the, people uh, in the concentration not, game's not good. Just based on race, because we thought they might be spying for our yeah. enemy. Yeah. Yeah, even yeah. though most now, of them were American citizens. Now, to be fa- we, but to be fair, we also in turn the Italians and the Germans that we don't talk about a lot. Oh, that uh, makes it okay then. That's fine then. But okay. we did that in much smaller numbers. Oh. oh. And it wasn't really like we... Anyways. <laughs> Another episode. <laughs> Another episode. Ta- so, yeah. Sorry, I got us off on, track. On August 15th, the Americans would be joined by Canadian forces now. With a combined total force of 34,426 men, we learned our lesson from the last invasion. Yep. We're like quadrupling up our numbers because, you know. That's how you do it. 
including the 10th Mountain Troops that were specifically trained for mountain combat, and so, the 82nd Airborne that was supposed to potentially drop soldiers in in one so, of the first Airborne drops for the so real Yeah, real quick, uh, do you think the reason that we learned uh, to send more troops was in part because uh, we had no idea that they were going to just decide to, I don't know, send everybody charging at at our soldiers <laughs> with swords? <laughs> like, I think that might have that might have been the, that might have like been oh we didn't yeah. see that coming no we thought it'd be a normal war these guys yeah. are nuts <laughs> that was a little crazy <laughs> yeah yeah well because you know in the, by like 1943 it's not like the Americans are like winning all that well in the Pacific front so mm-hmm. yeah I mean ooh. yeah because when, yep. when when was Iwo, Iwo Jima and all that stuff. Oh, uh, 45. That was at the end, right? Like 44, like, 45, the end of 44, uh, early okay. 45, when we started getting Iwo Jima, Okinawa, all that. Yeah. Okay. That was late. That was late. Um, they, learned, they learned from the invasion of Atu and actually would equip the troops with a little bit better winter clothing and better supplies, even though we're now like in August, but still, it's August in Alaska. It they doesn't. Give- they give them all, like, count. Zippo lighters or something. <laughs> like, like, here, warm your hands <laughs> gave, with this. They gave them some gloves and some coats. So, like, here you go, guys. Um, fear over the heavy combat in Atu would, would, would put all the men on edge. Uh, the plan was that the 10th Mountain would go in and start securing territory, and the 82nd would be dropped in in strategic locations to, you know, war pockets of resistance. Okay. Um, the invasion kicks off on August 15th in dense fog. All the landings went smooth, but, you know, as forces moved inland, they remembered what happened in Atu, and, you know, panic ensued. And somebody somewhere heard uh, a movement, and somebody somewhere heard a gunshot. Uh-oh. And so everybody went, ah! <laughs> it, just started firing. it just started unloading <laughs> everywhere. And, um, and it resulted in 313 troops being injured or dying due to friendly fire. Oh, my. 313? Because by the night of the 15th, it became clear that the Japanese had actually left. <laughs> Oh, no, wait. And the oh, no, island was no, no, completely no, no, no. undefended. No, no, hold up. Hold up. What? They, they, they landed on this island mm-hmm. and started invading in fog, thinking we're going to find somebody, mm-hmm. heard something, and then killed or injured 313 of their people, mm-hmm. and then, then figured out... They were actually no Japanese. They left. were fighting nobody? Yep. <laughs> <laughs> what? <laughs> And maybe this is the reason we didn't learn about it in history class, because it has to be one of the biggest, stupidest invasions that the American forces ever did. Like, this is like a, like, you, you, you lost people invading an island that had no people on it. I want you to imagine you are the parent of one of these soldiers who died during this, and you get the call, and, you know, they're obviously just going to tell them that they died in battle. But then later you learned how what actually happened. Could you imagine how, how just, how, how mind-bogglingly furiously, furious you must be? That's insane. Uh, after losing Atu Island, the Japanese actually uh, retreated all their forces out of the Aleutian Islands on July 28th under cover of fog. Because, again, look, it's always foggy. Yeah. In this area, so they actually withdrew all their troops, and um, and we didn't know, and so we went in there, and we were so afraid of the last invasion that we just went off half cocked, so to speak. Yeah, so you're so yeah just... you're sending a bunch of troops in that have heard about how crazy these people are who charge you with spears and don't care about their death or swords, bayonets, whatever, don't care about their own death. Like, I I can understand why they're on edge and why they're you know scared, nervous, and 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 all, all that, that but i mean it, it it sounds like they heard a noise and everybody just started firing without looking where they were firing and that, like what are you shooting at like you don't exactly. just shoot into fog like i, I understand i understand guns are dangerous and they're they're very you know powerful Johnny, i've been weapons. wanting i've been but, wanting to do this episode for a long time because i knew just the stupidity of it when i first discovered it i'm like it's unreal. Dear God. So, but here's the thing about guns is even if somebody's pointing it straight at your head, you have to move that far to not get hit by it. Like it, you just, it, it's a laser beam on a line. And, and so it's, it's not a grenade. You can't just toss it into fog and hope for the best. You're not going to hit anything if you're just shooting blindly. Well, Johnny, they did hit something. They hit three. Each other. 
of their own people. <gasps> oh, so that brings me up to the aftermath, John. So in recap, we had a a invasion uh, of you know Japan invaded the Aleutian Islands. First time we got invaded since 1812. But you know, so that's we got that as a historical fact. Uh, what? They ha- okay, okay. they treated the Japanese. They treated the uh, the Native Americans, the Atuans. Uh, as as well as we did, and by well, I mean they put them in concentration camp. Yeah. Um, we then use that as an excuse to put the rest of the Atuans in concentration camp. Right. To protect uh, them. To protect them. And then From the uh, other we, we wait a year to try to reinvade. When we invade, we don't give them the equipment that they need, so they freeze to death. Uh, and then when we do our final invasion, we kill 313 people of our own because we got scared and shot at them in the fog. So, like, this is, this is success. <laughs> but the aftermath, Johnny, so total numbers for the entire campaign. It lasted from June 3rd, 1942 to August 15th, 1943. Allies had a total of 144,000 people in the whole scope of the campaign. So that's everybody in Alaska. That's everybody who mm-hmm. got in a plane and a boat and all that stuff. 1,481 were killed, 225 aircraft were destroyed, 640 are missing, 3,416 wounded, 8 were captured, 2 U.S. vessels damaged, and 3 sunk. The Japanese... 640... The missing. Missing airplanes. No, no, people. That was people. Oh, okay. (laughs) Not not planes. Okay, I heard the 125 destroyed and then the whatever missing. Yeah, Yeah. Yeah. okay. That makes, the, Jap- okay, gotcha. the Japanese had a total of 8,500 troops. That's not they. Did, that's not the total numbers of everybody and all the boats and all that stuff, but 8,500 troops. Okay. Um, with 4,350 confirmed killed, uh, 28 were captured, 7 warships sunk, 9 cargo ships sunk, and at least 1 plane lost, but obviously more were lost, but we just don't know how many. We know 1 because we got it. Now, when ships uh, are sunk, um, as far as casualty count is, is concerned... Is, are they are are yeah they're, people they're taking into would account? Be, yeah, or? they're they're definitely put into those casualties. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. they do they do say there were X number of people yep. on this ship when it was sunk and those. Okay. Yep, 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 yep. Uh, two civilians would be killed uh, during this whole combat situation. Two and by civilians, I mean a two and native. Oh. And forty six wow. would be captured by the <laughs> Japanese and sent to internment. Mm-hmm. So yep. Yep. that's the. Uh, that's the Aleutian Island campaign, the last time, I believe, the last time the Americans have been uh, invaded, unless you count, like, 9-11. Like, actually, military. Right, like an occupancy-type invasion, yeah. not yeah. Actually just an occupied attack. Anybody 9-11 territory. was an attack on U.S. soil. Yeah. It wasn't really an invasion of the United States. Yeah, yeah, we've... So, the last time the United States was invaded... All right, that's it for this week in Historic Hindsight. Thanks for listening. Be sure to subscribe, rate, and review, and join us next week when we tell you all about James Moore.